Hi guys, how is everyone doing? Welcome back again to my channel and in today's video we are going to be discussing some of the advanced Git topics. We are going to first understand what are branches and how we can create new branches. Then we are going to look at examples of merging from one branch into another branch. And then we are going to cover the typical use case for branches like having a master, develop, feature and bug fix branches. So let's get started. So what is a branch? A branch represents a unique independent set of code base in which we can do our development. If we have multiple branches, the changes that we commit on one branch are independent of the changes on the other branches. Let's start off by having a look at one of the examples. In my previous videos, I have created a skeleton structure for my website and I have cloned the same locally. It has a bunch of HTML pages and some assets in the form of CSS files and images. And if I run the git status command, you can see that currently I am on my master branch and there are no changes to commit. Now let me start off by creating a new branch called develop from my master branch. So I will run the command git branch develop. And now if I run the git status command, you will see that I'm still on my master branch. Let me run the grid branch command. And you can see that I am currently on my master branch but there is another branch called develop available in my local repository. Now let me switch over to my develop branch and once the changes are completed and I am sure that everything is ready, then I will want to merge those, ch those changes back into the master branch. So let's run the git checkout command. Git checkout develop. And now I have switched to my branch called develop. And if I run the git branch command again, you can see that the develop branch is the current branch that I'm working on. Now I have opened my website in the brackets code editor and I have the terminal open in a separate window. So let's say that I am currently now on my develop branch and let's say that I want to start making some changes to my website. So I have opened index.html and I'm going to start modifying this file. So let me first change the title. Let's say welcome to Geeky Montu website. And let's also modify the header. So I have modified the header as well. So let's say now I'm ready and I want to push these changes. So if my master branch is equivalent to my production, I would want to merge these changes back into the master branch. Now I'm going back into my terminal and let me run the git status command. And as you can see, I have just modified the index.html. So let me commit add and commit these changes back into my develop branch. So I have committed these changes. Now I'm currently on my develop branch. Now let's say I want to merge these changes back into my master branch. So for that what I will do, I will check out my master branch back again. And I'll run the command git merge develop. So this has merged the changes from my develop branch into my master branch. And now I can push these changes back upstream and I'll just run the git push command to send these changes upstream. And that's completed now. 
So I have just pushed the changes upstream to my master branch because that was the current branch that I was on. Now, if I want to push everything and all my branches, I could just run the git push command and just give a parameter called all. And this will push the new branch that I created, the develop branch, also to the upstream git repository. And now I have gone back to my upstream GitHub repository and gone into my website. And I can see over here that I have both the master and develop branches available. And I can also go into the insights tab and go into the network tab. And I can see the level of my branches over here. So both master and develop are aligned, which means they are having the same set of changes on both the branches. Now I will go back to my brackets code editor and do some more set of changes. And let's save that. So currently I am on my develop branch. And I'll commit the changes that I have just made. So if I look at the git status command, I can see that I have modified the index.html. So I'm just going to add that again. Git add. And I'm going to commit it. And let's push these changes back upstream. Now this says that the current branch is not tracking any upstream branch. So I'm just going to run this command, git push set upstream origin develop so that my local develop branch starts tracking the origin develop branch. And going back into the GitHub and looking at my website repository, I can again see the insights and look at the network tab. And I can identify that my develop branch here is now ahead of my master branch by one commit. And that was the last commit that I made where I modified the index.html again. In a typical scenario, the way I want to actually maintain my Git workflow is that I would want to have a master branch which represents my production and a develop branch which will represent all the development work that will be going on. And if I have multiple developers working on the software and they might be working on different features of the application, so they would want to create their own feature branch on whichever feature they are working on. And then once they are happy with the changes, they would want to merge the feature changes back into the develop branch. And once I have a set of features that I want to take into production, I would then take that develop branch from all the features that have been previously merged and then merge it back into the master branch. And then my master aligns to whatever level of application is currently in production. And I could have another scenario where I'm asked to fix some bugs or defects in production. So for that, I will create a bug fix branch directly of the master branch because my develop or feature branches might still have unfinished changes in them, which I don't want to take to production. So I will fix those changes in the bug fix branch and then merge them back into the master and also rebase those changes back into the feature and develop branch. So this is a pretty generic use case that I follow for all my application development, but there may be other scenarios that you are trying to cater to depending on your requirement. So with this, we have understood the branching and merging process, and we have also covered the typical use cases for the branches workflow. And this concludes today's session, and I hope you find this video useful, and thanks a lot for watching.